Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Chez. I'm a pediatric epileptologist here to talk to you about responsive neural stimulation or RNS. Um, I'm talking on behalf of the Lance Gasto Foundation today. Next slide. What is it? RNS is an intracranial EEG recording and responding system that allows active demand stimulation to abort seizures so that if the EEG detects a parameter that says to the device, I'm having a seizure, it sends an electric shock to try and interfere and abort that seizure. Uh, similar to a, a cardioverter where uh, you monitor the heart rhythm and when you see an arrhythmia, it shocks the heart to be more normal. Um, it's that same type of model or idea. It requires a lot of pre-surgical epilepsy mapping and uh, deciding where you're gonna put the device. It's used for multifocal epilepsy or people who can't have surgery because of a critical area such as motor strip or vision where they can't remove the epileptic site. So they put this in to stimulate or if there's bilateral or more than one site with epilepsy. It's also being used for more diffuse epileptic processes that are multifocal including conditions such as lennox gesto and that data is being collected. Although it's not FDA approved for lennox gesto there are uh, clinical experience and research trials starting in lennox gesto using this device. It's different than deep brain stimulation in that it only sends off a signal or a shock uh, when there's a reason to based on EEG interpretation that the machine is taught to recognize. So there's a little computerized device that sits in your skull. It's actually implanted through the skull bone and sits there as you can see in this picture uh, and records EEG from the two electrodes which then also send a shock uh, and the battery lasts about five years um, on estimate. And so uh, this is something that you can adjust and change uh, and um, at this point, there's only two leads that can send signal and receive signal, uh, but you can implant more than two, leave it under the scalp and change those leads uh, with a small surgery at the scalp level if you wanna change more than one site that you think epilepsy might be coming from. So for instance, I have a patient we've implanted with a thalamic lead, uh, lead in the temporal lobe and a lead in the insula and we can switch at some point if we think one isn't working to try another spot. So it gives you that option. And some people have even had more than one implanted, although that's not under FDA label, it has been done for patients with four spots, for instance, that might need, uh, they get one device on each side. Uh, so there's lots of things you can do creatively with this device. Um, and we'll talk more about that when it talks about limitations. Uh, it does, however, require invasiveness of a surgery, obviously, a structure that cuts through the skull bone and sits in your skull, and also uh, implanted electrodes. Uh, next slide. So who would want this device? Patients who've had multifocal epilepsy or epilepsy that is not responsive to medicine, crosses multiple areas of the brain or critical areas of the brain that you can't remove with traditional epilepsy surgery, and that you'd, you might leave someone with an injury that's worse such as loss of vision or motor or speech function with surgery, this allows you to treat the epilepsy without removing the tissue. Uh, exclusion uh, may be that for some people who have uh, smaller skulls, such as children under a certain age or size, uh, this device may not be good to put into too young a, a patient. It's also not yet FDA approved for patients that young and anybody using it in children, and I was doing it as a compassionate off-label use, when they failed uh, other medications or options. So it can be done in children, it's being done in children, it's being done for patients with LGS, all of which is not FDA approved, but there's data to support its use in the appropriate cases and more research is being done to support it uh, as we speak. Uh, next slide. Why would you decide to try this? Uh, the device is a form of neurostimulation. Neurostimulation and theories about neurostimulation have been talked about since the 1940s. This is not a new concept. Um, it was actually one of the earliest ideas with epilepsy surgery being done in the 1940s, uh, but it's really no more modern computer systems and batteries and things that allow us to do this type of uh, recording of EEG in a constant fashion uh, with a device implanted like it is. So you got an EEG machine that's recording 
plus a computer that shocks the brain and sends signals to be recorded. Um, so it's a pretty complicated device, um, which obviously technology has allowed us to do with the size of the device. And hopefully over time, this device will become smaller and more sophisticated as uh, the technology continues to improve. Um, it sometimes takes months to see an effect with neurostimulation, as I've uh, mentioned in other talks I've given about neurostimulation. It's not like a medicine where you see an effect more quickly. This is a thing that may take months to find the right combination of the current or charge that you have to give to stop the seizures, as well as the frequency that it goes off based on designing it to go off based on how the patient's own EEG looks at that spot where seizures are coming from. And it may not cure, but it may aim to reduce seizure activity. And unlike removing brain tissue with traditional surgery, you can spare the brain tissue and leave it in place so it's reversible. If it doesn't work, you can pull the electrode out with minimal risk of hurting the brain. And so it's uh, less uh, permanent than, say, cutting out part of the brain or destroying part of the brain with laser ablation or radiotherapy or radiation, et cetera. Um, so it's basically for people who fail non surgical and other surgical options. Uh, some people have even used it in combination with deep brain stimulation or vagal nerve stimulation. So you may have more than one neural stimulator going, although that's not um, uh, contraindicated by the FDA indication, it's not part of the FDA indication. It's something that people do again uh, as an additional treatment to prior neural stimulation that didn't work as well or only partially worked. Uh, next slide. Why would you be concerned about trying this? Well, again, you have to do a lot of uh, long-term monitoring to make sure you know where the epilepsy is coming from. And in most cases, that might require invasive monitoring, usually in the form of stereotactic depth electrodes, which require multiple small burr holes uh, in areas where epilepsy would be looked for uh, based on the EEG the patient has. Uh, and that might be in both sides of the brain. It might be in the frontal and temporal region or occipital region. And in the case of lennox gasto it might be in the thalamic region or deep brain structures. So that you might need to have deep uh, hospital-based epilepsy monitoring with surgery, uh, putting electrodes in your brain before you decide where to put this. Um, this is one of the drawbacks to this and that people have to go through quite a bit of very careful testing to really make accurate placement for this device. Uh, however, um, in patients who failed all other treatments, uh, this offers a lot of hope and it's been very effective so far uh, in reducing seizure frequency in patients. Uh, the age of the patient, again, children aren't officially approved by the FDA, but hopefully will be eventually. They are doing trials in pediatrics as well as in lennox gasto Head size may limit whether you can have one device or two devices, and also whether people have uh, had a previous skull surgery or skull infection that might affect uh, whether you can put this device in there uh, safely. It requires battery changes every five years or so, which would be a superficial skin surgery to the scalp. Um, and there's only two leads that can be active. So if you have more than two sites, it may not cover everything, although there are ways to cover a broader area of the brain uh, and people are looking at different ways to use this to cover broad um, areas of the brain instead of just certain focal areas of epilepsy. Um, and again, anytime you do surgery, there's a chance of infection or damage to the bone. Um, so um, those would be drawbacks. Next slide. What else would you need to know? Uh, it usually does not replace, again, the need for medication. You may still be on medication. It can offer improved EEG data and collections so that you know how, uh, whether in the future, let's say there is one spot you're worried about, another spot you weren't sure, you might see that that other spot isn't so bad and there is a place you could do resective surgery. So if you have damage to both temporal lobes, for instance, one temporal lobe may still be able to be removed and get rid of 90% or 100% of your seizures. And this gives you more data. And, and, and one thing that's nice about this is you get constant EEG data. It also shows us that people have a lot more seizures than they feel or realize based on the EEG data that they're collecting. And also it allows you to see whether medications decrease the amount of seizure activity live. So if you change medications, you can actually look at this data to see are there more or less epileptic events. So that's another new thing people are learning about as they uh, study how this device gives us information. So this has been 
evolving. This is a still evolving story with more information coming every day of how to use this device to its maximum response. And I think over time, this will be a very interesting and useful device going forward and may become even easier to use once we know uh, how to use it to its full advantages for conditions like Lennox Gusto and other conditions. But right now we're still evolving, uh, but a very exciting uh, and, and unique device for it. differs from other deep brain stimulation or vagal nerve stimulation in that it's actually recording EEG and responding to it versus going off every two or three minutes on a timed, uh, no matter what basis. Um, those don't necessarily go off when a seizure happens. This does go off when a seizure happens. So it's a little bit different uh, um, planning and, and, and thoughtfulness to it. Uh, next slide. If you want to find out more about this and other topics, please visit the lgsfoundation.org.